Hi everybody, welcome to today's FindTheBestCarPrice.com video. Today we're going to look at the 2022 Honda Odyssey EX. This trim level starts at a base price of $35,960. Let's get started with our tour. So what's new for 2022? After all, I'm filming this video in April of 2021 and we're already looking at a 22 model Honda Odyssey. Well, for 2021, Honda did make some minor revisions to the exterior mainly on the front end, and there were some changes to wheel options available. All those changes, believe it or not, were meant to make the Odyssey have a more sporty look. And there were some changes to the interior as well. Radiant red with beige interior. There's only one change for the 22 model here, and it's not something that's been added. It's actually something that's been taken away. It's the Honda Vax. So I'm curious to know how many of you have an opinion about that change. Do you like it? Do you not? Does it make no difference? Well, I'm curious to know down in the comments. Of course, you're still going to find plenty of safety features and a lot of great modern technology. We'll look at some of those things as we go through our tour here. LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and LED fog lights, also LED tail lights. So basically LED all the way around. And since I'm always asked about this, do the side view mirrors have built-in turn signal indicators? Yes, they do. And trim levels, I will list all of those on the screen for the 22 model year and their base prices in case you want to know. I'll also list those down in the description of the video in case you didn't pause the video in time to see the graphic on the screen, you can still go down and take a look in the description of the video. This is a front wheel drive minivan, by the way. And one of the shining areas, among many, with the Odyssey is what's found right here under the hood. So if you were to line a Honda Odyssey up against a Toyota Sienna, say the 21 Sienna, that did receive a full refresh, you would definitely find that if all factors and things were equal as far as how many people were in each vehicle and all that kind of stuff. Well, you would find that the Odyssey would definitely outrun the Sienna because it makes more horsepower. The Sienna making 245. The Odyssey here with its 3.5 liter V6, 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. That power is put to the ground through a 10 speed automatic transmission through front wheel drive. Gas mileage comes in at an estimated 19 miles per gallon city, 28 out on the highway, a combined total of 22. And one of the ways that that is achieved is through the variable cylinder management system. So basically what does that mean? When not necessary, not all of the cylinders are firing, that means less fuel is used. And this little minivan will actually spin the front tires just a little bit if you take off from a dead stop. I've done that in previous videos. Now, you also have to consider something here that is definitely a plus. The Odyssey has a smooth and stable ride. That makes a big difference. And like I said, all sorts of great technology and the interior has some very solid features that we'll take a look at right now. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, I'm going to introduce you to a new term. Well, at least I assume it is, but the multitasker. And there are a couple of multitaskers throughout the interior of this Odyssey. One of which being the area down here where you would drop the stowing magic rear seats. All you're going to do is pull on this strap right here and it's just this simple. Very easy to do. And there are written instructions right here on the back of the seats to tell you what to do with that. And of course, as you can see, that's very easy to put back in place right there and the seats do recline as well. Now, what is the first multitasker? Well, it's the little area where these stowing magic rear seats fold into. If you're not using that area or maybe you're just using one side with these seats back here, one side's down, one side's up, or both of them are up, you could actually store, well, whatever you can get to fit or whatever you need in that area down there. Maybe you have something you picked up at a hardware store or something like that that's, that's pretty tall and it won't fit 
inside the interior without maybe laying it down and maybe it's a plant or something like that as an example and you don't want to lay that down in the interior well you could probably put the pot down in this area and the plant could still have enough space to ride back here in the rear area multitasker for sure groceries whatever you want to put back there whatever will fit plenty of opportunity now what about space in this third row of seats keep in mind the middle row can be moved forward they slide back and forth and forward and backwards so you actually can move those up to increase leg space here for the rear passengers if so desired and there are a couple of ways to get out of the back seat once you get in and I'll show you how to get in once we hop up to the front area or the middle area here and open those sliding side doors but let's just say the middle row passengers forget somebody's back here in the rear. Well, they could reach around to the side and pull the lever that ultimately moves the seat forward, but there's also a strap on the rear that you can pull as well. And everything basically has a little instruction, kind of a diagram on it to let you know what it does. So what could be easier? Oh, and by the way, while I'm back here, since I didn't show it already, here are the numbers for cargo space, and there are multiple numbers there. Why? Because not only can you fold these rear seats down, those middle row seats are configurable in a number of ways. You can slide them back and forth. You can remove that middle seat that has the cup holders built into it and slide the outer seats in either, either direction, whatever you want to do or if you want to muscle these seats out they are removable individually so there are actually three different seats there in the middle row that all come out individually this van is ultimately a multitasker why do i say that not only because of the area down here where the stowing magic rear seats go but also because you could remove those middle row seats and use this as a work van if you wanted to and put the seats back in for the weekend if the family wants to go somewhere there are so many different options available here that you won't find with all of the competitors of the odyssey all right guys like i said it's very easy to move these seats forward and allow access to and from that third row and all you have to do this very rear lever right here all i did was push up on that and i mean just look at how easy that is that is a very easy thing to do it slides forward but you also have the ability to recline these seats i don't know how well you can see that on the screen but those do recline quite well and like i said you can remove that middle row seat and right here is the lever that allows you to or the release i should say maybe that allows you to move the seats back and forth or you can tilt them forward with this very front release tilt those forward and actually pull them up off of their anchor point on the floor and take these outer seats out also now they're a little bit heavier than that middle row seat or the middle seat here in the middle row is just a word of warning there you might need to get some help and then again you might not it might they might pull those out and tell me tom those things are super light because you're a whole lot stronger than i am whatever the case may be quite a bit of storage of course you've got multiple cup holders not only here in the rear seats but also here for the middle row seats everybody literally has their own air conditioning vent grab handles here to make getting in and out easier even though not really necessary but it's nice that the grab handles are there just in case but obviously the odyssey isn't sitting up very high off the ground okay guys let's talk about what you will find here in the front seat these driver and passenger seats are heated and if you live in northwest louisiana i know this time of year that does not mean anything to you most likely maybe really early in the morning for just a short period of time today is april 24th by the way of 2021 still a little cool in the mornings but definitely not something you're going to need later in the day so only heated don't have ventilated seats here that would be a nice feature to see but you do have all the typical features and functionality here and a lot of features you can turn on and off as far as safety features go you can go in to the infotainment screen and do that now the one thing that maybe we'll see in the future with some of these hondas and i haven't seen this even on the higher trim levels i don't believe where you can go in and change the sensitivity of say the lane keep assist or whatever the case may be it's either on or it's off but it's nice to know that the option is there and of course 
comfortable steering wheel here. You've got your steering wheel mounted controls, everything you would expect to see. And if you do want to have that sporty experience, you have multiple driving modes. You have snow, econ, you have drive, and you have sport. Driving sport, you can use those shifter paddles if you want to. You could just go cruising down the road, changing gears, gearing up, gearing down, and kind of feeling sporty in your Odyssey. And one of those multitaskers I talked about earlier here over on the left hand side of the steering wheel, I realize that not every vehicle is equipped with this lever, at least not with this kind of functionality. At least I don't think it is based on the way some people drive, but you have the multitasker here on the left hand side that controls the lights, the headlights, the fog lights, whether everything's set to automatic, whatever it may be. And if you push this lever up, you hear that clicking sound? You look on the dashboard, you'll see a green arrow pulsing, pointing to the right. And if you push this lever down, you see the same thing on the left hand side of the dashboard. What exactly is that? For those of you who maybe don't have that option on your vehicles, that's called the turn signal lever. Like I said, it's a multitasker. So when you're turning to the right, you push it up or changing lanes to the right. And the same thing when you're turning to the left or changing lanes to the left, just in case you didn't know, because I know there's a lot of drivers out there who don't. And over here on the right-hand side, I can't really get a, give a sarcastic review of exactly what's here on the right-hand side. That's where you're gonna control everything to do with the windshield wipers. Front windshield, or the windshield wipers here in the front, you've got the rear window wiper in the rear. Almost called that a windshield. That's not a windshield back there. But if you need to use that, it is back there. And of course, you can run your windshield washer fluid and all that good stuff. Now, got your infotainment screen here. And like I said, there's a lot of settings. In fact, just to go over a couple of them that I find interesting here, you can go into vehicle and hit keyless access setup. And you've got several different options here, door unlock, keyless light flash, keyless access, your remote start on and off, which by the way, the remote that comes with this vehicle, you do have remote start with that and push button start here in the interior. So no key required and walk away auto lock as well. But here's the thing, door unlock mode. Let's go in and take a quick look at that. You have two options here. You can use that to where you hit the button on the remote one time and it only opens the driver's door or unlocks the driver's door and the tailgate. Or if you want to only hit that button one time, it's just a personal preference, you can set it to all doors. When you hit that button once, all the doors unlock. It's something you might want to use depending on your personal preference. Everybody has their differences in that respect keyless access beep you can turn that on or off if you want to quite a few features here depending on what you want walk away lock so when you walk away the keyless lock as you walk away from the vehicle it automatically locks if you want to turn that off you can turn it off or you can enable it depending on what you want to do the infotainment screen here in these hondas are very easy to use very easy to learn maybe you've never had this kind of technology before Guys, don't be afraid of that. It's super simple to use. Dual zone climate control here. So actually it's tri-zone really because you have dual zone here in the front and single zone for the rear. There's a control panel over the side sliding door here on the passenger side. And you can sync these two together in the front if you want to for both sides so that the driver and passenger if you change the temperature on the driver's side, it changes to the same thing on the passenger side, or you can unsync those if you wish to. And like I said, here are the controls for heated seats. And one of my absolute favorite things to always turn off that auto stop start feature. And why would I want to turn that off? Some people might say, well, you're saving gas. You're, you're maybe saving a few drops, but let me tell you what you're not saving with that technology. That feature will wear your starter out a whole lot faster than you would experience otherwise. And like I said, multiple driving modes there and ultimately a push button shifter here. 
Tell me what your personal preference is. Do you like that push button shifter? Would you rather have a column shifter or maybe one here with the center console? And speaking of the center console area, a lot of storage right here. You've got your connectivity here with a 12 volt and USB. And I always think of a garage door here. You've got more connectivity inside when you open that, but the garage door with the lid for the console there, I find that to just kind of remind me of such. Okay guys, there's a couple of things that I want to make sure I don't forget to mention. Number one, the steering wheel manually adjustable, tilt and telescopically, so obviously it's fully adjustable. And of course, you're going to have a backup camera with multiple views that make a lot of different situations much easier to deal with. I know for those of us who have been around long enough, we sure remember the days when there was no such thing as a backup camera that came standard on a vehicle. And for those who don't know, in case somebody has a question about that, is there a certain trim level you have to buy of the Odyssey to get a backup camera? No, there isn't. It was actually a federal mandate in the United States of America that every vehicle by the year 2020 was required to have a backup camera. So obviously the automakers were way ahead on that, but it is what it is. So I intentionally wanted to drive this particular road because I wanted to give you a good idea of road noise. This road is very rough, very uneven. I'll just let you listen. You do hear some road noise, but it's not that bad. And I know you really have to experience it for yourself to really get that. Keep in mind, I'm just using my lapel mic to record the audio here, but I drive this road regularly and I can tell you that this is not too bad. The ride quality also, the Odyssey rides very well. I've heard people talk about the Odyssey not riding very well, but I have definitely not had any problems in that respect. You have to keep in mind, the roads in Louisiana are definitely not the smoothest you're gonna find by any means. And so someone might think, oh man, this vehicle rides terrible. Well, go drive somewhere where the roads are actually taken care of and properly maintained, unlike they are in this state. And then you can have a better understanding of that. The overall driving experience is good. Good visibility. Of course, you've got the driver aids to help keep you safe as the driver, keep you and your passengers good and safe as you're cruising down the road. And I'm in sport mode. So I'm going to drop the hammer just a little bit here. You can hear that 3.5 liter V6 going to work. And although it's really hard to give a good proper assessment because, well, there's no cargo in the vehicle. I'm the only person in the vehicle, so we don't have a lot of extra weight to take down the road. But I feel pretty confident that acceleration would not be a problem with the Odyssey, no matter what the situation is. Driving over the railroad tracks there, give you a little bit of an idea of the road noise with that experience. But just overall, it's a nice vehicle to drive. And even though I haven't driven every single minivan out there yet, we'll do another video with the Toyota Sienna in the near future because I haven't driven one yet, but I will. And we can do a better comparison. But just based on my experience in doing car reviews and just driving in general, I must say, I'm impressed with what the Honda Odyssey offers in every form and fashion. Definitely high marks, not only with the driving experience, the ride quality is good, good technology that's not difficult to learn, and just an overall high mark situation in every form or fashion, of course. Obviously, this is not the highest trim level you can purchase, but like I said earlier in the video, I get a lot of requests to review lower trim level vehicles. To learn more about the model in today's video, visit the link in the description for a detailed comparison between trims and pricing for the vehicle we featured or any vehicle you may be interested in. These pages feature information such as our recommended trim level based on price, value, and features. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We look forward to seeing you next time.